the very first description of the operation stands to be what? So, if I just describe the operations which are the elementary transformations or elementary operations which can be applied to a given matrix to transform it, manipulate it, modify it into a completely new matrix, what would be the very first description? The very first operations description or the very first elementary transformations description is interchange ith and the jth row or column. So, the very first style of transformation is to interchange any two rows or any two columns. As I told you, this particular style of transformation can be practiced in many many ways depending upon what are the number of rows in the given matrix and what are the number of columns in the given matrix. This transformation is just saying that you need to just interchange the ith and the jth row or interchange the ith and the jth column. Now, if I have a 3 cross 4 matrix, that means it has 3 rows and 4 columns, I can interchange any 2 rows among the 3 rows and any 2 columns among the 4 columns. This one transformation can be applied to a matrix in many ways, right? What is the notation which is adopted to represent this operation in compact form? Well, because I am interchanging ith row with the jth row, the notation is row i interchanged with row j. And if I am interchanging my ith column with the jth column, the notation will be column i is interchanged with column j respectively. Let's move on to the next style of transformation. The next way in which you can transform, modify a very matrix which is given to you is by manipulating any of its row or any of its column by multiplying it with a scalar. So, the second type of transformation says multiply ith row or ith column. by s where s is not, not equal to 0 or a non-zero scalar. So, s is a real number which is not equal to 0. Whenever you wish to apply or basically subject your given matrix to such a transformation, you basically wish to multiply every element of the ith row by this non-zero scalar s and hence transform this ith row thereby transforming the entire given matrix A. So, we just transform one row or one column of the given matrix by multiplying every element of that row or column by s and hence we transform the entire matrix. So, the compact form in which this particular operation is represented is that completely your ith row is replaced by s times your ith row and if you are performing the exact same transformation over the ith column, therefore the notation will be column i is replaced by s times column i, correct? Again depending upon how many rows are there in the given matrix or how many columns are there in the given matrix, this particular transformation can be applied in many ways to the same matrix. You can say row 1 goes to 2 times row 1 or row 1 goes to 8 times row 1 or column 3 goes to 5 times column 3. In so many infinitely many ways you can apply this transformation to a given matrix. Okay? That moves makes me move to the very third style of transformation. What was it? It said add S times row I to the jth row or I can say add S times 
ith column to the jth column. So, this particular style of transformation says what? That you pick up any of your rows and you add to it scalar multiple of some other row. That is how you transform that particular original row. So, suppose I perform this particular operation on the ith row. That means, ith row will be replaced by ith row plus s times. So, basically I am saying add s times ith row to the jth row. So, s times ith row to the jth row will be added. So, jth row basically will be transformed by adding to the jth row s times the ith row. Similarly, jth column will be transformed to the jth column plus s times the ith column. And that is how by just transforming one column, manipulating one column or one row by performing such a manipulation, you can modify your entire given matrix. This is how in the compact form this operation is represented. Okay. Once this complete table is understood to you, let me just make a note of what I previously as well said to you in the last lecture. We have learned that elementary transformations are exactly of these three types. Obviously, they can be performed on a matrix in infinitely many ways, but definitely they will be either of this type or this type or this type. Okay? Now, these elementary transformations you can see are basically trying to manipulate a given matrix to modify it to obtain another new matrix. And this manipulation when it is happening over a matrix, is basically happening over the rows or columns of that matrix. Every transformation can be applied to either the rows or the columns of the given matrix. If an elementary transformation is applied over the rows of the given matrix, that means if you are manipulating the rows of the given matrix to obtain the modified matrix, that means you are going to call those transformations as elementary row transformations. And if you are applying these elementary transformations over the column of the given matrix to transform it, these elementary transformations will be called elementary column transformations. So, let us make a note of it. An elementary transformation is called elementary row transformation it is called elementary row transformation or elementary column transformation depending upon whether the operation is applied over the rows or the columns of the matrix. Once this particular thing is clear to you that every elementary transformation is either a row or a column transformation depending upon whether that transformation is applied over the rows of the given matrix or columns of the given matrix. Now, this particular thing motivates me to actually bring light to a very, very nice good concept which is the concept of 
if omega is a complex cube root of unity then the value of this determinant is what now the moment i say omega is cube root of unity the properties of that should pop up in your mind it is 1 plus omega plus omega square is 0 and you can very easily see each row has 1 omega in omega square right so i'm going to say if i say that column 1 goes to column 1 plus column 2 plus column 3 i'm going to get this determinant being equal to 1 plus omega plus omega square which is 0 rest same then again omega plus omega square plus 1 which is 0 rest same and omega square plus 1 plus omega which is 0 rest same the moment you have one complete column to be equal to 0 your answer is actually completely nothing but 0 the only thing of point over here was that 1 plus omega plus omega square happens to be 0 when omega is cube root of unity. Next question says that the number of values of k for which this system of equations has infinitely many solutions. Now, you are given two equations and it is said that this has infinitely many solutions. By Cramer's rule, if you recall that infinitely many solutions if this system has, that means d equals 0, d1 equals 0, d2 equals 0. What do I mean by this? d is 0 and d1 is 0 and d2 is 0. What is d? The determinant of the coefficient matrix which is k plus 1 k 8 and k plus 3 this determinant is 0 and when you replace the first column by this particular I can say column vector what first column you replace by 4k 3k minus 1 and next keep the same 8 k plus 3 this is 0 and when you replace the second column by 4k and 3k minus 1. This is your d2 and the first column remains the very same. You are replacing the second column first remains the same k plus 1 and k. This is 0. Very easily you can expand this you are going to get k plus 1 k plus 3 minus 8k is 0 and 4k into k plus 3 minus 8 into 3k minus 1 is 0 and k plus 1 into 3k minus 1 minus 4k into k is 0. When you solve this you get k equals 1 and 3. When you solve this you get k equals 1 and 2. And when you solve this, you get k equals 1. So what is the value of k for which this is 0, this is 0 and this is 0? It is only one value which is the number 1. For k equals 1, this is 0, this is 0 and this is 0. That's the common solution to all these three equations. And therefore, it is for k equals 1 that this, this particular system is going to have infinitely many solutions. So your answer is k equals 1. Moving on to the next, we have fx is given to us in the form of determinant f of 3x minus f of x is what then? Okay, so here if I talk about this particular determinant, you can again see I have x plus lambda xx, x plus lambda xx, again x plus lambda xx. So I am again going to go for the same operation. Column 1 goes to column 1 plus column 2 plus column 3. So my determinant is x plus lambda plus x plus x which is 3x plus lambda and then you have x, x. Then again in the next row here you have 3x plus lambda, x plus lambda, x and again you have 3x plus lambda, x and x plus lambda. 3x plus lambda can come out common. I am left with 1, 1, 1, x, x plus lambda, x, 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 x plus lambda. Row 2 goes to row 2 minus row 1. Row 3 
goes to row 3 minus row 1. When you do this, that's obvious operation because I want a 0 over here. 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0. So that's what I am doing. 1 x x, then you have 1 minus 1, 0. x plus lambda minus x is lambda and x minus x is 0. So you have 0 lambda 0. 1 minus 1 is 0, x plus lambda minus x is lambda and x minus x is 0. Then 1 minus 1 is 0, x minus x is 0 and x plus lambda minus x is lambda. What is this determinant? This is nothing but lambda square minus 0 which is lambda square. And outside you already have 3x plus lambda. Right? So you have lambda squared into 3x plus lambda as your f of x. So what will be f of 3x? In place of x put 3x, you get 9x plus lambda into lambda squared. Therefore, f of 3x minus f of x, that's what we need to find, f of 3x minus f of x is what? f of 3x lambda square 9x plus lambda minus f of x which is lambda squared 3x plus lambda. So lambda squared common plus or this is minus minus 3x minus lambda because we want to subtract it right. Plus lambda minus lambda cancels you have 9x minus 3x which is 6x into lambda square and therefore this quantity is coming out to be equal to 6x into lambda square. Nothing great, I just used the very operations to evaluate determinant and I got my answer. Next you have question number 4. The value of this particular determinant where a, b, c are actually the pth, qth and rth terms of a harmonic progression. Okay. If A, B, C are P, Q and Rth terms of an HP, then they are actually P, Q and Rth terms or I should say their reciprocals are the P, Q and Rth terms of the corresponding A, P. So let A be the first term and D be the common difference of the corresponding arithmetic progression of this HP. Then if small a is the pth term of this hp, then 1 upon a is actually pth term of this ap, which is a plus p minus 1 d. Similarly, the reciprocal of b is the qth term of this ap, because b is the qth term of this hp. And because c is the rth term of this hp, its reciprocal will be rth term of the corresponding ap. Now if I talk about this particular determinant, you have B, C, C, A, A, B and then you have P, Q, R and 1, 1, 1. What I can do is, if I say A, B, C multiplied, divide, again A, B, C multiplied, divide. Again A, B, C multiplied, divide. Rest same or I can say what you can do is row 2 goes to row 2 minus row 3. Here we have P minus 1, Q minus 1, R minus 1, we obviously need to use this. So build this setup P minus 1, Q minus 1, R minus 1, 1, 1, 1. ABC is going to come out common, right? ABC comes out common. You are left with BC upon ABC, which is 1 upon A. CA upon ABC, which is 1 upon B. And AB upon ABC, which is 1 upon C. Then you have P minus 1, Q minus 1, R minus 1, 1, 1, 1, right? After this, what I am going to do is I am going to basically 
say that rho 1 goes to rho 1 minus d times rho 2. So, when you do that, you get 1 by a minus d times p minus 1, 1 by b minus d times q minus 1, 1 by c minus d times r minus 1. Here you have p minus 1, q minus 1, r minus 1, 1, 1, 1. What is this? See, 1 by a minus p minus 1 into d is capital A, 1 by b minus q minus 1 into d is again capital A, and 1 by c minus r minus 1 into d is again capital A. So, your first row is completely replaced by capital A, capital A, capital A. p minus 1, q minus 1, r minus 1, 1, 1, 1. Whenever two rows of a determinant are same, its value is 0. Okay? So, the value of this determinant where a, b, c are the pth, qth and rth terms of this h, hp is actually equal to 0 and that is how beautifully it is dealt with. How harmonic progression concept actually comes into picture and helps you evaluate the value of this reciprocals, use all the operations and hence get the answer by the properties of determinant to be equal to 0. Let A be a 3 cross 3 matrix such that determinant of A is 4. Suppose B i j is 2 i plus j a i j, where i and j are varying from 1 to 3 and B is this, then determinant of B is equal to what? So, what exactly is B? B matrix is, let us see what it is. The 1 1th entry of B is 2 to the power 1 plus 1 a 1 1. So, it is 2 square a 1 1. Next similarly is 2 cube a 1 2, 2 to the power 4 a 1 3. Similarly, the 2 1 th entry is 2 to the power 2 plus 1 a 2 1, 2 to the power 2 plus 2 a 2 2, 2 to the power 2 plus 3 a 2 3. And similarly, you have 2 to the power 4 a 3 1. 2 to the power 5 a 3 2, 2 to the power 6 a 3 3. This is your 3 cross 3 matrix B. What will be the determinant of this particular matrix? What is determinant of B? Let us compute that determinant. What would that be? Now you can see, you can see 2 square common in the first column, 2 cube common in the second column and 2 to the power 4 common in the third column. So I can write this as 2 square, 2 cube. 2 to the power 4 common, you are left with a11, 2a21 and 2 square a31. Then here 2 cube was taken out common, so here you have a12, then you have twice of a22 and 2 square of a32. Clear? From here you took out 2 to the power 4 common, so left with a13, 2a23 and 2 square a33. Fine. Now you can see 2 is common in the second row, 2 square is common in the third row. So you take that out common as well. This becomes 2 to the power 9 and then you take out a 2 common and a 2 square common, basically 2 cube common you take out. You will be left with a11, a12, a13. 2 has come out common, so a21, a22, a23. 2 square come out common, so a31, a32, a33, which leaves you with determinant of a. And that is given to be as 4 that is 2 square. So, your answer is nothing but 2 to the power 14 and therefore, that comes out to be your very correct answer. Next question let us see is what? This determinant is equal to 0 if a, b, c are in a, p, g, p, h, p or alpha is a root of this quadratic equation. Let us see. So, over here you can very easily find out I can what all the operations can I apply? You can see third row is basically alpha times the first row plus the second row. So, what I will do is I will say that row 3 goes to row 3 minus alpha times row 1 minus row 2. So, when you apply this operation, you basically get what? A alpha plus B minus A alpha minus B, this gives you 0. Then you have B alpha plus C minus B alpha minus C, which again gives you 0. And here you have 0 
minus alpha times a alpha plus b minus b alpha minus c. So, what do you get? You get minus a alpha square or you can just write it as this, right? So, here you get minus of a alpha square plus 2b alpha plus c, clear? Now, the first row and the second row remain the same. This is a, b, a alpha plus b, b, c, b alpha plus c. Of course, you can expand this along the third row. When you do that, what do you get? You get minus of a alpha square plus 2b alpha plus c times ac into b, ac minus b square. Or you can write this as b square minus ac into a alpha square plus 2b alpha plus c. This is the determinant and the value of the determinant is given to be 0. This is 0 when either this is 0 or this is 0. b square minus ac is 0 that means b square is equal to ac that means abc are in gp or a alpha square plus 2b alpha plus c is 0 which means alpha is the root of ax square plus 2bx plus c equals 0. So these are the two correct options in this particular question. Okay. Next question says what? If delta x is this, then talk about the value of a, b, c, d. Okay. So delta x is given to be a cubic polynomial to us basically. Now over here if I want to talk about the values of a, b, c and d, I am going to be interested in delta dash x. What would this be? 2x minus 5. Then you have 6x plus 1. I am differentiating every term on the first column. 14x minus 6. Rest two columns remain the same. This is 2x minus 5. 6x plus 1. And this is 14x minus 6. And here you have 3, 9, 21. Plus, now you are going to differentiate the second column. You have, this remains the same. What is this? x square minus 5x plus 3. Then you have 3x square plus x plus 4. And then you have 7x square minus 6x plus 9. And here you have 2, 6 and 14. And then you have 3, 9, and 21. Okay? Very, very, very easily you can see over here these two columns are same. The value of the determinant is 0. In fact, this, this determinant is also 0. So you are getting delta dash is actually equal to 0, which means delta is a constant. If delta is a constant, that means there is no there is no non-zero coefficient of x cube, no non-zero coefficient of x square, no non-zero coefficient of x, only this constant term is present. That means a is 0, b is 0 and c is 0. So what is my function actually? It is equal to delta x equal d. What is d? You are going to get the value of d when you put x equal 0. If you put x equal 0 everywhere, you basically get the determinant 3, 4, 9, minus 5, 1, 6, minus 5, 1, minus 6 and 3, 9, 21. When you compute that determinant, you get the value of d which comes out to be 141. So your very determinant or this function is delta x equals 141. That is your constant term to which my function is equal to because a, b, c is going to come out to be equal to 0. Fine.